Welcome back to part two of our series where we are exploring the world of authentication and authorization inside of the Microsoft Azure platform. So in our previous video, what we were talking about was more of what is authentication and authorization and how does that relate back to this idea of the Azure Active Directory? And so now that we have at least, I hope, a decent understanding of what those concepts are and what the Azure Active Directory is, we're now going to at least talk through what registering our application looks like. Now, we're not going to actually go through a physical step of registering it in the Azure Active Directory just yet. We actually are going to reserve that for a few videos down the road. But before we actually do that process, it's going to be really helpful to understand what happens when we go through that process and how that's going to relate when it comes to accessing those particular resources. Okay, so what does registering our applications look like at a high level? Well, when we register our application with the Azure Active Directory, two different objects are created for us. The first one is the application object. Although there are kind of different exceptions to this, the application object can be considered the definition of an application. That doesn't help. <laughs> so this, a lot of this is coming directly from Microsoft. And when I first read that, I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? When we think about the definition of an application, we have to keep in mind that a lot of things can be done with that application, right? So it can access different resources, and then more importantly, it can define things like how it should be accessed. So when we think about the application object, what we're really talking about is what, what is important to the application when it comes to accessing different resources. So we need to know, hey, what applications can this application access? So in other words, can my uh, web app, can my web app access my database application? for example, just as a scenario. Um, additionally, we need to make sure that we define what information we need from somebody or from the user or whoever it might be in order to use our application. So that's also something that we can define when it comes to uh, defining our application. And then additionally, there's going to be certain information that is stored in the directory, right? Because our directory is kind of like our lookup manual. So we need to make sure that we have an application name as an example, or maybe a tenant ID or an application object ID. These are all important pieces of information because when we want to go and use our directory to access other applications, we need to have something that is in common with all of them, but at the same time allows for uniqueness. It allows that application to be unique, whether that's through an ID or a name or whatever it might be. Additionally, we have something called a service security principle. Now, technically you're gonna hear service principle, but you'll also hear security principle, which is a more broader version of a security principle. I'm sorry, of the service principle. So this is where things can get a little bit confusing because you're going to hear user principle and you're going to hear service principle. Those, those both fall under the idea of something called a security principle. So security principle is high level. Service and user principle are more specific versions of a security principle. Now, a service principle generally references an application object. And one application object can be referenced by multiple service principles across directories. What does that look like in a sense, right? Well, I have one application, but I want multiple people to access that particular application. So in this situation, a, in a sense, you, you have multiple people talking to your application object. So it can be referenced by multiple people. So I have a single user who can access that application, but my, I can have multiple people access that same application. Additionally, um, we will see that to create a service principle, we can do it either through registering our application or we can take other steps through different tools like the Azure CLI. Okay, so 
what are these two objects and how are they related? Well, in certain simple terms, one defines a template and one defines how we can access our application. However, we should explore these objects in more detail. So application object, the template. An Azure AD application is defined by its one and only application object, which resides in the Azure AD tenant, so the directory, where the application was registered. This is also known as the application's home tenant. The application objects describes three aspects of an application. How the service can issue tokens in order to access the application, resources that the application might need to access, the actions that the application can take. So if you think about this at a high level, right, you have an application, it might need to access other resources. So we need to know that in advance or say somebody wants to access our application. We need to know what does that process look like when it comes to making sure that we can give them the token through some type of authentication protocol. And then additionally, what are the things we can do with this application, right? So we might not want uh, this application to do everything. So this is where we define those actions. An application object is used as a template or a blueprint to create one or more service principal objects. So, this is a starting blueprint that we can then use to create a service principle. Now, with that service principle, we will find that we can customize it even further by saying, even though we can take all these actions with this application, I want this particular service principle to only be able to do one or two of those actions. So it, again, allows us to even further define what that looks like. Security principles, ooh, fun, fun. To access resources that are secured by an Azure AD tenant, the entity that requires access must be represented by a security principle. This requirement is true for both users, user principle, and applications, service principles. The security principle defines the access policy, the permissions for the user application in the Azure AD tenant. This enables core features such as authentication of the user slash application during sign-in and authorization during resource access. A service principle is created in every tenant where the application is used. So just to kind of reiterate a little bit, we have an application and we want to access that application, or we want to access the resources that exist in that application. The security principle defines that access policy. It defines how we can access this application and those resources. Additionally, it also defines the permission for the user in the application in the Azure AD tenant. So what are the permissions that it has? What are the things that it can do? So this comes in handy because then when we define these two topics, we can uh, allow or we can basically enable this idea of authenticating a user and then authorizing the resources inside of our particular application. So this is kind of bringing home the bigger point of we want to make sure our resources are secure. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have an authentication process. We're going to verify who the person is, and then we're going to authorize by defining this access policy that says, hey, these are the things that it can do. So this is where it kind of comes home. Now, I have my little notes here. I don't know how necessarily helpful it's going to be, but I think sometimes this is just a confusing topic. And so I try to put it in like the simplest terms possible. If you're still struggling, after this video, I would say take a day or two, just let it digest. Um, it's just one of those topics I think you just have to let it sit for a little bit to really kind of understand what's going on. But at the same time, let's kind of walk through, I guess, a very watered down <laughs> explanation. So when we talk about the application object, we can think of this as the global representation of your application. So again, across everything, you know, this is what our application looks like so for, across all tenants so and a service principle is the local representation for use in a specific tenant 
to put it in a very diff in a different way, I could create an application that can do four different things, for example. So a very simple application can do four things. It can create new records, it can update existing records, it can delete existing records, and it can query existing records all from a database. So these are the things that it can do. These are the actions that it can take. So this is my application. This defines my application. It's a database and it has four different act actions. So we do a lot of work and we create our simple application and decide to register it with the Azure Active Directory because we wanna make sure we know who accesses this application. So we wanna create some type of process where we can verify who can use this database. And then if, and if they can access all the functionality of our application, so we can also define the authorization aspect about it. So when we register the application with the Active Directory, we create two things, an application object, and then a service principal object as well, right? So we have an application and we register it and we create this global representation, the application object, our template, and then we can create a local representation of our particular application or our idea of a application. So this defines maybe a more fine tuned version or more granular uh, access policy, for example. So in a sense, both really represent an application, but one is a more global, here's a template, but here we also have a local representation where we say, hey, we can take that template and we can modify it to meet our needs. So we might not want to give Joe the ability to delete records in a database. Well, that's where the service principle would come into play. That would say, hey, this is, even though this is the application, we're gonna modify it and say, hey, even though there is this action available, I'm not giving it to that individual. I'm gonna limit, I'm gonna make it more granular. So the application object serves as a template it says what the application is and what it can do. And at some point we will want to access our application. And when we want to, we will use our service principal object. The service principal object will define what we can access inside of our application. So take a second, think about that. <laughs> I might want to give Joe the ability to query records, but not delete records. That's really important. <laughs> In that case, I can create a service principle that gives Joe that specific access. On the other hand, I have Alex, myself, who I wanna give full access to. So I wanna create another service principle that would allow me to have more access to our database or our application. So. At a high level, that's kind of what we're working with, right? So this is thinking about what is the Azure Active Directory and how does it relate to our applications and how does it relate to making sure that we securely uh, protect, or we, I guess we protect our resources and applications inside of Azure. Now, that's for the next video. Next video, we're gonna be talking about something called role-based access control. This is just a way of creating a service principle, but it's a little bit more fine-tuned to meet our needs. So this is where we're gonna start seeing this more granular process of creating the security principle, but we're gonna do it in more uh, specific terms, more specific terms to make our lives a little bit easier. However, at this point, if you do have any questions about what is an application object, what is the security principle, and how this kind of ties back to the Microsoft Azure platform, by all means, put them down below. Hopefully I can answer your questions. If not, I might just redirect you to a particular documentation resource. But I would just kind of reiterate what I said a little bit ago, if this is still a little bit confusing, don't worry. We're gonna go through some examples together when it comes to creating a role-based access control. And I think that will kind of help drive home some concepts that you might still be confused about, but don't worry too much at this point if you're still kind of going like, what's going on? I, 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 don't, I don't know what everything is. Trust me, it will get better once we start doing it in more action, but I think it's very important that you at least have a high level understanding of what these concepts are, so that way when we start going through that process, it's not gonna sound like this very foreign idea. You're gonna have at least some sort of foundation that we can start building off of. That's really the important part. So 
Again, if you have any final questions, put them down in the comments below. If not, we will see you in the next video.